Okay, welcome to the next video in our Maintaining a Balance series. This video will be looking at the dot point, gather, process and analyze information from secondary sources to compare the process of renal dialysis with the function of the kidney. So the main point of this uh, particular syllabus dot point is to be able to compare the processes of renal dialysis and the normal functioning of the kidney. So we've been looking at the function of the kidney over the last few lessons. So today, this video will be mostly looking at renal dialysis with a bit of a comparison between the two at the end. So what happens when the kidneys don't work? Kidney failure occurs when your kidneys can no longer filter the waste products from your blood. So as we've seen, it's extremely important for the kidneys to be able to remove nitrogenous wastes as well as excess water and excess salts from the body in order to maintain a stable internal environment. When your kidneys lose their filtering ability, dangerous levels of these waste products may accumulate and your blood's chemical makeup may get out of balance. Acute kidney failure can happen rapidly over a few hours or a few days. So people can be seemingly healthy and then all of a sudden um, kidney failure can happen quite quickly. It is most common in people who are already hospitalised, particularly in critically ill patients in intensive care, mostly because their water levels are already out of balance and they're also uh, obviously bedridden, so they're not able to move around and uh, remove these excess waters in other ways. So acute kidney failure can be fatal and requires intensive treatment. However, if you are in good health, uh, so all other parts of your body are fairly healthy, acute kidney failure may be reversible and kidney function may return to normal. Obviously, a range of factors will come into play as to how well your kidneys function again after suffering from kidney failure. So some different causes of kidney failure. So one of these can be that you have a condition that slows the blood flow to your kidneys. Conditions that can cause this include blood or fluid loss, heart attack or disease, liver failure, uh, in an, an infection or a severe allergic reaction, burns or dehydration. So basically a lot of these things involve a decrease in our blood volume. So if we don't have a decent supply of blood flow traveling through our kidneys, then we obviously can have um, damaged being caused. And as we can see in the picture, our nice healthy kidney versus our darkened kidney that's had a reduction in the amount of blood entering. Secondly, it could be caused by damage to the kidneys. So this can be brought about by gl blood clots in the vessels around the kidneys, an autoimmune disease known as lupus, where the body attacks the kidneys uh, because they don't see them as belonging to uh, the body. Uh, cholesterol deposits, just like um, arteriosclerosis in other parts of our body, if there's deposits within the arteries, the blood can't get in there properly. Um, or different toxins can also cause damage to the makeup of the kidney. And lastly, urine blockages in the kidney. So this can be the result of cancers, so a variety of cancers, including uh, bladder, colon, prostate or cervical cancer blood clots in the urinary tract, kidney stones or nerve damage involving the nerves that control the bladder. So if the blood's not being, uh, sorry, if the urine's not being removed from the, the bladder, then obviously we could have a buildup of uh, this in the kidneys. And as we can see from the picture there, we've got quite large kidney stones forming in the kidney that's blocking the uh, collecting ducts towards the urethra in order to get the urine from the kidney to the bladder. Some symptoms, you may have a decreased urine output because your kidneys aren't filtering your blood properly, they're not removing the excess water, so you're actually not uh, urinating as often. A fluid retention that can lead to swelling in your ankles and your legs. So as you can see in the image at the bottom, a normal foot versus a foot with edema, which simply edema refers to swelling. So the fluid building up causes that sort of pitting uh, when there's pressure applied to the skin drowsiness and confusion, shortness of breath, fatigue, nausea, seizures or um, a coma in severe cases and chest pain or pressure. So a lot of these really come down to the buildup of fluid in the body and the blood not being able to carry the necessary uh, nutrients, so the oxygen and the glucose to our cells in order to be able to carry out respiration to produce energy uh, as normal. So some treatment. Treatment uh, typically requires a hospital stay and the length of stay will be dependent on the cause of your kidney failure and how quickly your kidneys recover. So these are a few um, factors that will depend on that uh, or make, sorry, will decide on the length of your stay will be things like your age, your general health and things like that. 
Treatment options will depend on the underlying causes. So that goes back to the previous slide. What is causing your kidney failure? Uh, doctors and nurses need to find that out first so they can work out a, a plan of attack. Uh, treatments to balance the amount of fluids in your blood can involve the use of IV fluids or diuretics. Medications to control blood potassium can be administered to avoid buildups of potassium in your blood, which again alters the uh, way that salt and water are reabsorbed and excreted by the kidneys. Medication to restore calcium levels can be given, okay, because uh, calcium helps with the firing of the muscles, in particular our heart. And most importantly, the one that we need to look at clearer or closer is dialysis to remove toxins from the blood, which act as an artificial kidney. So there's two different types of dialysis that we need to look at. The first one we're looking at is hemodialysis. So during hemodialysis, blood is cleaned outside of the body. So while the person is hooked up to a machine, blood flows through a tube made of a membrane that allows the waste products that are much smaller than blood cells to pass out through it and into uh, the machine. So waste products pass through the membrane into a dialysis solution and then out of the machine. The clean blood is then carried, uh, is carried through and then returned to the body. The dialysis machine also removes excess water via ultrafiltration, which can be done without dialysis. But obviously, um, if you're going to go through the dialysis process, you might as well do both at the same time. And hemodialysis happens over and over for the duration of the dialysis session, which goes for about four hours, approximately three times a week. Okay, so it's quite an, an intense process, uh, but it does obviously help to reduce all those toxins and things that are in the body and helps a person to live a fairly normal life. Peritoneal dialysis uh, is dialysis that occurs inside the body. So the blood is cleaned inside the body through the peritoneum. So there's a thin membrane that surrounds the outside of the organs in the abdomen. And we'll have a look at a picture on the next slide of what we mean by that. So this type of dialysis is carried out by running a dialysis fluid into the peritoneal cavity and then out again. So waste can be filtered from the blood. Peritoneal dialysis can provide good efficient dialysis, but it needs to be monitored carefully. Because there's no machinery involved, uh, levels of water and other wastes need to be monitored to make sure that the dialysis is progressing uh, effectively. And it needs to be, for, be performed daily with breaks only because of unusual circumstances. So unlike hemodialysis, peritoneal dialysis sorry, has to happen all the time because of um, it's not sort of controlled by the machinery. It doesn't remove things or it doesn't remove things as efficiently but um, it's a, a slightly slower process so it needs to occur all the time. So in this image we see a basic uh, diagram of hemodialysis. So we have our patient laying in the hospital bed where he's attached to the dialysis machine. So we can see that the blood comes out of the artery to the apparatus through a pump and there's a series of tubing so which is made of a selectively permeable membrane. This is bathed in the dialyzing solution. Okay, so as it passes through there, we can see in this above image that the waste products move through the membrane and into the dialyzing solution, and then that's removed from the machine, and then the clean blood takes uh, the blood from the apparatus back to the vein, and it gets put back into the patient. We then have per peritoneal dialysis, so as we can see, it takes place inside the abdomen. So our solution goes into the abdomen here and we can see the membrane that's there. Okay, we have ultrafiltration of water taking place, diffusion of urea and electrolytes from the plasma into the dialyzing solution, which is the blue solution, and then the wastes are removed in the yellowish type solution here. Okay, so this table here shows our comparison between uh, normal kidney function and hemodialysis. So normal kidney function is a process that is carried out naturally, where hemodialysis is an artificial process that replaces the natural function of the damaged kidneys. Kidney function is carried out by two fist-sized organs, while hemodialysis is performed by a large machine attached to a variety of computers and other equipment that's constantly monitoring levels of water, nitrogenous wastes, salts, etc., to make sure that the machine is working effectively. 
the kidneys work to remove waste constantly. So even uh, though we don't realise it, our kidneys are filtering our blood all the time. Hemodialysis, on the other hand, is performed intermittently under hospital conditions two to three times a week for up to four hours at a time. Our kidney functions, uh, sorry, our kidney function to vary the output automatically. So depending on concentrations of waste in the blood, the kidney gets feedback from the brain and the kidneys themselves in order to know whether they need to increase the amount of water absorbed or secreted. Whereas hemodialysis involves the concentration of substances in the blood and the fluid being monitored by computers so that the wastes are removed during the treatment. Okay, so it's not an automatic process. Uh, and substances or wastes are removed by both passive and active transport during kidney function. Whereas in hemodialysis, wastes are only removed by passive transport. So there needs to be a difference in concentration inside the membrane and outside in the dialysis solution in order for wastes to be removed. So that brings us to the end of this video. So uh, we've talked about kidney failure, what happens when they don't work, some different forms of treatment in, in particular, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. And this last slide here provides you with a fairly basic comparison between uh, normal kidney function and the process of hemodialysis. And that's all, thank you.